Hey there, my name's Rob Wolf, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the science of electrolytes, in particular sodium intake. Very superficial look at this, but I think if you follow health and wellness recommendations at all, you're probably familiar with this idea that we are counseled to keep our sodium intake low, to avoid processed foods. And clearly avoiding processed foods is probably a win for anybody, but it's interesting when we really unpack this topic of sodium intake as it relates to health, in particular cardiovascular health, it's kind of confusing when we look at what the recommendations are versus what we actually see with published literature. In 2011, the Journal of the American Medical Association published a really fascinating paper that looked at uh, cardiovascular disease patients, folks that already had known, diagnosed, uh, cardiovascular disease state, and they looked at the sodium intake that these folks experienced in their diet and their relative risk of morbidity and mortality, death and complications, essentially. And what was interesting, there was this thing called a U-curve. So there was, at a low intake, a very high incidence of morbidity and mortality, complications and death. And that was at about two grams or lower, and it actually got very steep the lower and lower that folks' sodium intake uh, was and which is fairly contrary to what the recommendations are cur currently, which is to keep sodium intakes quite low. But what's fascinating is uh, the low ebb, the, the lowest incidence of complications was at about five grams of sodium intake per day. But then on the right-hand side, as people started consuming more sodium, the increase in risk was very flat compared to relative to in taking too little sodium. One needed to take in almost eight grams of sodium per day to equal the relative risk and morbidity and mortality that we saw within uh, you know, the lower intake. And again, this is within a group of folks that you would argue if there was going to be a benefit related to a low sodium diet, these cardiovascular patients should be the folks that, that show the most benefit. And it, sodium definitely is a factor in hypertension, but we're kind of getting the, the process a little bit skewed uh, we'll talk about this later in some of our science features, but it's really the hyperinsulinemic state, the state of having chronically elevated insulin levels that leads to the overall hypertensive process. And so modifying sodium intake doesn't really affect that, not the way that we've been counseled. So this is just kind of a general baseline. It looks like perhaps the recommendations for these very low sodium intakes are misplaced for even folks suffering cardiovascular disease process, to say nothing of general population, if we look at recommendations from the American Council of Sports Medicine for active populations, folks that are highly active, training in warm or humid environments, the recommendations there range as high as seven to 10 grams of sodium per day. And most folks are just not doing this. In fact, what we see is that most folks focus very strongly on hydration, water intake, but absent adequate electrolyte intake. And finally, if you're experimenting with any type of a paleo, ketogenic, or low-carb diet, your sodium needs increase, they don't decrease. And so when we take this whole story together, this is really why we put Element together. There just wasn't a product that addressed the needs of folks from an aggressive electrolyte supplementation standpoint, particularly with an eye toward sodium and also a low carbohydrate intake. So I hope that this helped to clarify our needs for electrolytes and sodium in particular. We've provided other resources on the Element website.